Mohab and welcome to Bahrain to Touchdown Middle East 2023. I am now joined by Joe McCaffrey, CEO of Duke McCaffrey. And Joe, it's a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much um, uh, you, for the invitation. You didn't have long to come from Dubai all the way to Bahrain, but uh, the market shifts quite dramatically within the region itself. Uh, let's paint a picture around the investment. What's the investment landscape for data centers across the Gulf region uh, in this day and age? Well, we're, we're finding at the moment on the ground uh, the projects and the clients that we're dealing with, that they're, they're sort of a kind of two streams of demand. Um, one is building the digital infrastructure and data centers uh, for the future, but there's also uh, a growing demand with customers with AI technology, Bitcoin mining, mm. financial services. So you've, you've customer driven demand and you also have investor driven demand. Um, so there's a different profile in projects and, in, and investments that we're seeing at the moment. Um, and, and both have different ambitions. Mm. Um, so it's a really interesting landscape. Uh, it's obviously very interesting in this particular region um, because there is there is a race going on and uh, the Middle East is, is in that race now and it's, it's, it's trying to catch up mm. with Europe and uh, with mm. Asia mm. who are maybe more advanced in some ways. Yeah. Uh, definitely more advanced in the investment modeling and thinking around data centers. Mm. So yeah, so we're seeing kind of two streams going on. Mm. Um, and there's, there's definitely just huge demand, huge ambition, and it's a really exciting time to be in the Middle East. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so what we were just saying in one of the panels, if, if we compare the, the megawatt per capita um, in this region to more mature markets in Europe or Asia, um, that there's a big disparity. Where would you place the Middle East? Um, if you had to compare it on a timeline, and I know this is really hard, this is maybe a weird question, but if you had to compare yeah. it, or how far behind is to Europe and uh, places like Singapore, not, not Asia as a whole, um, where does the Middle East stand in the race? And, uh, and will it take that long to get there anyway? Because there's no legacy infrastructure, it's going to be faster to, to deploy things, there's more cash available. Yeah. Um, can you paint a picture of how this is going to move in the next few years? Well, obviously Europe is very uh, developed in this mm. market and you know, they've captured digital infrastructure you know, 10 years previous to this. So they are, they are more advanced uh, in Europe and Asia obviously the same as well. Uh, so the Middle East is, is a little behind. But what I find out interesting about the Middle East is the Middle East is probably stronger, mm. um, has better funding, better financial models, uh, better appetite for risk as well. Um, and uh, because of that, then, you know, I, I find that, uh, that there's just going to be a better catch up in the race, if that makes sense, um, because of this a better attitude to, to funding mm. and risk. Mm. Um, so I can see the Middle East catching up very quickly. What would be great from our perspective is if the Middle East can outpace in technology and thinking um, and capture the next 10 years okay. against the future. So I, I, I'd be very positive about the Middle East and how strong they are mm. as a regional player mm. uh, in the digital infrastructure world, yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah, it will definitely be very interesting because, um, I mean, we had some numbers already shared uh, at the conference, even though we just started, yeah. um, that the Middle East currently has about 400 megawatts of uh, available power. Yeah. I mean, this is going to double every two years. It's almost yeah. like the Moore's law before power <laughs> in <Yeah>. data centers. <laughs> are, you, are you seeing those figures? Do you think those figures are conservative? They are too optimistic? Where, where yeah. do you see the market going in terms of capacity um, uh, over the next 5, 10, 20? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 figure, the, the figures are small, really, mm. like 400 is... Is, is pretty low yeah. uh, in comparison to what's going on in America right now. Hmm. Um, but it, it, it's interesting that it's, you know, the figures are correct, but it's also interesting how it's going to grow and what hmm. that will look like in terms of profile. So when I started out in this business nearly 20 years ago, hmm. we were building very small data centers. A one megawatt data center was huge. So everything scaled up quite dramatically. And the scale of the power needed for high density hmm. uh, digital infrastructure hmm is going to be the game changer. Mm. And I think why the Middle East will be stronger is because they can produce more power, mm. uh, have more access to the natural resources mm. to do that. Uh, so there will be a stronger player in the power game, mm. in my opinion, and it could be very, very interesting how that landscape might balance out. Mm. So Europe is really struggling. They're yeah. running out of power. They've stopped providing power in Amsterdam and Frankfurt mm. and all these locations, and Dublin as well, who are strategic data center powerhouses. Um, but that problem doesn't exist in the Middle East and that's yeah. where the game I think is going to get very interesting mm. uh, where the Middle East I think will be really strong mm. Uh, mm. is that they can do power mm. uh, at scale mm. and that's what's needed yeah it'll be interesting to see if it's almost like a, a Nordic 
uh, move, like, yeah. like what the Nordics did for Europe, the Middle East is going to do for the world, right, almost yeah. in a way. Yeah. But maybe a bit of a controversial question, what about sustainability? Is that a big topic here? Is it a concern? Is it much more fossil fuel oriented? Yeah. Um, where, where will the sustainability play come into, into play um, in the region? Like, it's certainly a topic, yeah. Mm. It's not been ignored. Um, the problem globally is that it's, it's not sufficiently tabled within projects and within mm. uh, legislation. And uh, so we would have expected, our expectation was it's going to be much further advanced. Mm. Um, and, and it's just not there and it's very disappointing mm. uh, that we're not more advanced in, in sustainability. Data centers is the big opportunity because we can stabilize grid power. Mm. Um, and we also have great opportunities in, in how we advance our technologies to be a huge contributor to sustainability. Mm. <clears throat> because everything now is about power and data. Mm. Um, and, you know, data being a huge element of all this mm. sustainability technology mm. and, 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 and requirements. But I think it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's as good here as it is anywhere else in the world. And, yeah. and we build across the world. Yeah. Uh, I've seen it just as good. Uh, but there's great opportunity in here, particularly with solar power. I think this is an, just an amazing opportunity uh, that can really help get, get ahead in the race as well. Okay. Yeah. And then, so beyond the power, are there any, any other challenges, any, any other massive moves by different countries that could really shape up the industry? So I'm thinking of things like uh, data sovereignty, regulations. Yeah. Um, and I'm coming from a, a place where I don't really have that much knowledge about yeah. regulations in the Middle East. I know there's data sovereignty laws uh, in some countries like Saudi and all that, and it's, that's driving demand. Yeah, but yeah. Um, can you paint a picture of uh, challenges with a specific outlook on, uh, on regulations and how that's going to shape up yeah, things here? Yeah, regulation is going to play a huge part in mm. uh, the regional location of, of data mm. and um, because there's a kind of a complex geographical legislation system in the Middle East. Yeah, it's not uh, just the Middle East unfortunately, that, that, one is, that one is a global thing. That is a global, yeah, it is a global problem. <laughs> um, it, it just makes it tricky to mm. advise um, investors of how you would go about mm. building in, in a location in the Middle East uh, that uh, ensures data sovereignty and, and, and that issue. But there's a, there's a global game going on between manufacturers and, and strategic position of equipment. Uh, there's also a global picture that needs to be addressed, which is around mm. data sovereignty and legislative frameworks. Um, mm. And uh, whichever region can get ahead in making the data sovereignty suitable for multinational engagement mm. will 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 be stronger at the end mm. Um, mm. and and that's that's what, that's what we're seeing so mm. locations that have good data sovereignty uh, mm. uh, legislation mm. are, 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 are definitely strategically more mm. appealing to to external investors okay before we jump into what uh, Duke McCarthy is doing right now what's the country that excites you the most in, the, in this part of the world uh, Saudi is it's, Saudi. It's just yeah, yeah. It's just really I mean, turning. The, num the numbers are mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Saudi is 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 uh, huge. The level of investment is unprecedented. Mm. Uh, really exciting time for that for for that region, um, and it's it's really exciting for us to be here, bringing our skill set and expertise mm. uh, from our experience uh, across the mm. world. Uh, but it's just what's going on in Saudi now is mm. is really really interesting. Mm. But the whole region, you know, coming to Bahrain today is a, is a very big statement. Um, it's it's great opportunity. It's such a positive step that this is a great uh, region mm. to be to be in as well. Um, so it's it's a very exciting time mm. for the Middle East. Okay. Um, Do you see Saudi and I guess the Middle East as a whole becoming kind of the beating heart of the the, the global digital infrastructure sector? Because um, I mean, it sits right at the intersection of Asia, Africa, and Europe. It's right. right in between. It's right in the middle. So everything will come through here. Yeah. Do you see that as the, the end goal for all this? I, I think that's. I think that's where mm. it's going to go. Yeah. I think Saudi is mm. going to ultimately be most predominant in the Middle East region, region from digital infrastructure perspective, um, and they'll have the scale. They mm. also have the land mass and the ability to do that and the population. Uh, so it, I think they're going to be very dominant mm. uh, in data infrastructure mm. uh, in the future, and, and they have a great opportunity as well. Mm. And, great, great opportunity to, to get ahead. Um, and I think they're doing that. They're doing it in a, in a very massive step yeah. uh, right now. And it's a very exciting time for Saudi. Uh, but we're hopeful about the whole region because we like yeah. to work in, in the different... <laughs> yeah, it's uh, all about cooperation. Yeah, it is. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we would hope there's a spin-off, even from Saudi's success in this. 
uh, spin off into other parts of the region mm. uh, that we can develop our skill sets and mm. help clients in those mm. locations, yeah, for sure. Okay. And then looking at uh, yourself and uh, Duke McCarthy, so why, why are you guys going to be doing over the next 12, 24 months? Uh, what, what's the plans for the business, the focus? I mean, you're going to be hiring more people, opening up subsidiaries in other countries. Just paint a picture of uh, where the business is going to go because you're going to fly with everything that's happening here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a great time to yeah. be here. Um, and we put a small investment in a, a couple of years ago mm. uh, to set up a, an office. Um, and uh, we've, in recent times, we've been very successful in Saudi. Uh, so we're working on Project Neom and we're working uh, with other clients in the region mm. around data center and the pre-construction side. Uh, so we're very excited about, mm. about what we're going to do in the region. Uh, we're going to have a presence in Bahrain. We're going to have a presence in Dubai and Saudi. They're kind of the three key locations for us in this region. Um, we're going to a point next year ahead of our business uh, for the Middle East um, and then we let the, gr the growth come from there uh, in terms of uh, resourcing up and uh, mm. becoming a key player mm. in the project management, cost management side of, mm. of, of construction projects. Mm. So that's what we're doing, that's our vision yeah. for the business. And it's definitely going to be a busy year for you. <laughs> it's going to be busy, yeah, we're going to definitely be busy, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's nice busy in, in this region, everything is... It's very measured and very, you know, it's, 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 it's a very sustainable place to mm. invest for our business and to grow it in a yeah. way and work with clients in a, in a collaborative way. Yeah. So we're, we're excited about that, yeah. yeah. That's one of the beauties of this industry is that um, things are happening fast, but they also happen with, with some brains behind it. Do, um, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's an industry that's being built from scratch, yeah. but in a, in a very nice and uh, clever way. It is, Especially yeah. with the AI, AI yeah, boom that's coming. Yeah. Um, so, and then, of course, so we are in Bahrain for Touchdown Middle East 2023. It's the first edition. In a year's time, when we come back for the second edition, what's the one thing you would expect to have happened in the Middle East um, that will have transformed the market? It can be, I don't know, one, one, one trend, one event that you really would like to see have happened in 12 months' time. Well, I think today is a statement for sure that mm. uh, there's a huge amount of attention on the investment in data centers. Mm. And the coming together of all these great companies and people is the first, I think, big step in, mm. in, in really building a foundation for data centers in, in the Middle East. And, you know, if one great thing could happen uh, by this time next year would be that the people that are at this event mm. collaborate over the next 12 months, bring all their ideas and skill sets together to help develop the digital infrastructure mm. in the Middle East. And we come back in a year's time and we'll just see the rewards of that, uh, which is you know, one step further in the AI race, one step further in Bitcoin mining, one step further in, in yeah. providing customers with hyperscale data centers. Yeah. Uh, that'd be an amazing thing for the region. Mm -hmm. and I'd, be, I'd be very confident that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Collaboration will definitely be key. And this is actually quite a diverse event. There's over 20 countries represented, yeah. um, even beyond the Middle East. So that's, that's quite interesting. But uh, John McCarthy, CEO of uh, Duke McCarthy, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank um, you. Thank you for your time. As for your home, thank you for watching. And do check the website at www.techcapital.com for the latest news and timely features of digital infrastructure across the world. At the Tech Capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now.